by the way, she is going to talk about Design System Carnival. Uh, I think I can just introduce her. She's um, a software engineer, a designer, and a conference speaker who has deep industry experience that fuels, fuels sorry, her passion for making apps beautifully accessible. She is currently a senior design systems engineer at Northwestern Mutual and a color module specifications editor for the W3C Design Tokens Community Group. In her spare time, uh, she's the creative director for the Cross Sisters Network and the best Lantern Rouge uh, cyclocrosser you'll ever meet. So, please, ladies and, ladies and gentlemen, welcome on stage, Kathleen McMahon. Yes. I'm very proud of myself for drinking water. Oh, it's so important. I'm very dry. Okay. Hello. Ah. So, welcome everyone. Oh my God, I'm so excited to see everyone here. Um, welcome everyone. I am Kathleen McMahon, and I am here today to talk about a design system carnival and uh, about how one accessible component can wear many pretty masks. So before we begin, let's get some details out of the way. My presentation will be posted on Noticed. That is https colon slash slash n-o-t-i dot s-t slash r-e-s-o-u-r-c-e-1-1. I'm going to start my timer because time is important. Julia, <laughs> it's going. <laughs> And I will post the full URL on Twitter after the presentation when I have all the slides and the notes uploaded because I will have all the talking notes and code samples and whatever when it's cleaned up for you. So y'all can follow me at resource11 on Twitter, Instagram, and GitHub. So here's an outline of what we're going to be covering today. Oh, wait, no, we're not going to have an outline. We're going to figure it out. So let's back up so I can introduce myself better. I'm an engineer and a designer, and I like to speak about things. And like Mr. No Problema, who is legend, just said, he is a legend, by the way. I sometimes race cyclocross. He is. He's legend forever now. He, I sometimes race cyclocross very badly. Uh, mostly you'll see me in costume, racing two laps to your six laps at the back of the pack on a single speed bike, wearing a costume backwards with a bunch of onlookers laughing at me. I'll have a little um, um, USB speaker in the back pumping out some tunes so everyone will laugh and toast at me with their beverages. Always fun. I heard that there was a, a, a cyclocross, world cyclocross race in Verona that I missed a few years ago. A friend of mine went. I wish I went. But now, I think you all agree, in the past few years, it's been very intense, right? Just a bit, just a little bit. See that penguin in the middle of the screen? Not that one. That one. <laughs> <laughs> that was me. 2020, 21, 22. Burning outs, surviving, COVID layoffs, tech interviews where you're perpetually interviewing for finals. New jobs, the isolation of lockdown, more burnout. And so I did a few things to survive, like spending time getting crafty with lighting setups during the colder months and photographing my cats, Thor and Otis. This photo of them snuggling <laughs> clearly shows they are always fighting. It's a problem. And in the summer, I go to the beaches at different times and different days at different locations, always at low tide, baby, which is the best time to find sand dollars. It's a baby sand dollar right there. Because I found my first one this year, and ever since I have to go at low tide to find the sand dollars. It's like the Where's Waldo of the ocean. So I get a serious collection of sand dollars, and I photograph my treasure every time. And that will be my next talk, the sand dollar <laughs> design system. 
But I have a problem when I try to do this at home because Otis is especially needy. See, during lockdown, before burnout hit peak, I also started a heck of a crystal collection. I can quit any time. <laughs> and I attempted to photograph and get good photos, but Otis was having none of that. Like, none of it. Absolutely none of it. And so my attempts at this, yeah, nope. And he's now even taught Thor to do the same, and <laughs> Thor looks pretty satisfied. But who could resist Otis and Thor? You know, they have to be here with me, so they are here by proxy. Anyhow, when it was time to head back here in person, because I was here for my first talk in Verona three years ago, I was so excited, like, people, finally! And also, I remembered, oh my god, talking to people. My inner introvert felt, you know, was like, oh, like, any of you panic about seeing people in person? No? Just me? Okay. But anyway, excitement won all y'all. You know, but now that I've shaken off my stage fright anxiety, thank you for your patience. <laughs> so, so you're here to learn about design system carnivals. Now, currently I'm working with an amazing group of people at Northwestern Mutual, and I'm a senior design systems engineer, helping them take the Luna design system team to the next, Luna design system, system, not the team, to the next le level. And I'm a super fan of design systems, and I always love this gift, because who doesn't like to, you know, flip in, in a costume into a pool? And this is exciting work, and this is basically what you do with design systems, is you have big Venn charts and are overwhelmed with all the things you have to do. So if you've ever worked in a design system, there are a lot of moving parts, and it feels like you are herding, not hurting, herding kittens. Um, so similar to herding kittens in a row, which never happens, um, um, <laughs> trying to mature a great design system is tough. So you have to be strategic in what you decide to do. And this is why I maintain that design systems are like a carnival. And what do I mean by that? Well, one, um, they're fun. They're a festival. They are, they are beautiful. But also, <sighs> let me tell you a little bit of a story. So when I presented at React JS Day in 2019, after the, sh after the show, I went to Venice for a few days. And I saw the masks. And I was fascinated by the masks. I love their beauty, their variety, and the way they just, just went out all the, and just created this sense of consistency. Like they had, it was wacky and wild, but they were also consistent. So you had, you know, the Belta mask and the Plague Doctor mask. Well, well, yeah, that was good timing. <laughs> Thanks, dude. Um, and but also with these masks, they have this you know, uniform look and a set of consistent actions, you know, for being in a party. Same thing with the design system. You know, you all look consistent, you all do consistent things. And they are everywhere in Venice. Like, everywhere you look in Venice. In the shops. In the souvenirs. I even took, made my own mask when I came back a few days ago. I made my own mask. It's up in the, it's up in the room. I'm very proud. But there's even a, like the history of masks and how it provides a way for you to blend into a situation, whether by gender identity or social class. So I thought that was just really cool. And this is how like masks are really, how they tie into design systems. I thought it was really fas fascinating. So, you know, just the different ways that you could use a mask to bring cohesion into a system and into society and into a way of like having everyone do a similar thing. I thought it was pretty cool, so this is why I wanted to do a talk about it. But also, it's a way that you can either be part of a party, you know, like a masquerade, but you can also, with a component, do different things with a component, like a disclosure widget, which is what I'm going to talk about today. But also it allows you to join a party and fit in, or fit into a system. But also it can go very wrong. And we hope it's not going to go wrong today, but maybe it will. So I'm going to demo maybe how it could go wrong. Um, so when you have masks, you can do things like this, like be part of this like really cool party in Venice, which is really, really nice. 
And then if you do it well, you can make accessible components. And why is that important? Well, we have our users that have different needs like vision, hearing, motor needs, cognitive needs, sensory language barriers. I mean, you're all talking in Italian and I know about 10 words now, maybe 11 tonight, which is awesome. Um, I know Spanish well, just not Italian well yet, just yet, growth mindset. And we want to make sure we're not leaving our, our users behind. So, you know, let's get on this. Um, I have a whole talk on accessibility, flavor of React components. This is what I did in 2019. I will share this talk out um, with this deck. So I'm not going to talk about any of this, but I'm going to use some of these components as, you know, building blocks for what I'm going to be doing today. So you can have access to that. But to save time, I'm not going to talk about that. So what I'm going to talk about is the disclosure widget. And it's one pattern that has many uses, but we're going to begin building it starting with, a, I would call it a, a basic primitive mask. So the anatomy of a disclosure widget is a button that opens and closes a sibling container. And so it just controls a container, opens and closes it, and returns should return focus to the button with a specific key press. So the primary keyboard interactions are you should be able to open and close the button with the mouse, with the space bar and the enter key, and be able to return focus if we hit your container is open, press the, the escape key and return focus back to the button. So what's, and, and let's see if I, it looks like I have a duplicate slide. I do. So we're going to skip that and begin building our widget with a JSX button. Why? Because of, uh, under the hood, it renders an HTML button. And an HTML button already supports mouse clicks, space bar, and key presses for us. So woo, free, free key functionality for us. So we're going to use that as a basis of our pattern. And then we're going to add ARIA attributes, only the ones that we need. We're not just going to shove everything in there and confuse all the screen readers. We're just going to add exactly what we need. So um, we want to use the ARIA attributes that will let the screen reader know when the container is being opened and closed. And we want to know, let the screen reader know, if you have many widgets on the page, which container is being opened or closed. So like we're going to add ARIA support to the button. And the three ARIA attributes we're going to add to this component are ARIA expanded, which lets, lets screen readers know whether the widget is expanded or not. ARIA has pop-up to tell assistive technology if there's an associated pop-up with the button. And ARIA label for in the cases where we need a more accurate button label. We also need to add state and click handlers to toggle the container open and closed. And to do that, we'll use React state hook, use state hook to define the is open state variable and the set is open state function initializing is open to false. Optionally, we can also pass in a default expanded prop instead as a Boolean if we want to, you know, say we have a widget that we always want to have start as like default open. So we could have that functionality like sent in to the state. Then we will create a um, toggle open function and pass in the set is open function in there to toggle the state between true and false whenever we need it, whenever, you know, whenever we need that, and pass that toggle open function into our buttons on click synthetic event handler prop words hard. And then we're going to pass in the is open value into the buttons aria expanded prop fun fact if you look there notice how i'm using aria dash expanded on the button component there um, react under the hood will support the aria dash um, the, the um, kebab case for any of the aria attributes because they just do they know what it does under the hood so you can do that which is a really neat thing. You just have to like do something special to like have it recognize it when you're doing things. I can explain that later, but time is short. Um, but it's really nice. 
Um, you're also going to add the um, is open prop to the children in your container container div to only render the children if the is open state is true. And then we're going to add some focus management. So we're going to set our widget to listen for the escape key presses and return the focus to the button when the widget closes. So we'll start by creating a button ref using the use ref hook, initializing the value, the um, button ref to, to null to start. And then we're going to make an on key up handler function, which listens for whether the escape key is pressed while the widget state is um, open is true. And if the state is open is true, we'll set is open to false and send focus to the button ref. And then it will focus, send focus right back to the button and close the widget. So it's pretty cool. Then we'll pass that function over to the on key up sy synthetic event that is wrapping the whole widget. And then we'll pass the button ref to the button ref, pro button ref prop. And now your widget will close on escape key press, which is nice. And never to be forgotten, CSS focus states. Hooray. We always forget those as last. Um, so I will open code sandbox, code sandbox later. Sip. But let me see if I have notes. Yes. But let's get our focus states normalized. Since browsers don't give us a consistent look for focus states, we're going to make it clearly visible to our users when our interactive controls receive focus. So basically, those are those are buttons, inputs, radio inputs, anything like that that where you know receives um, users' input. We are going to add some default styling to the the focus pseudo input throughout our app and pick a color that is at least a three to one contrast ratio between. Um, like the border and the background. And so if you notice there, I have the, um, the global selector and the focus pseudo selector, and we're setting the outline to zero, which you, that's a big no-no. But when you do that, if you replace it with other things, that makes it okay. So we're doing the adding a box shadow, and then we're doing an outline offset to like, you know, bump it out a little bit and using some CSS variables to add, you know, add some color and add some thickness to make it a little beefier and like thicker. And then, so we have like this default consistent styling across our app. Then we can, oh, backwards, forwards. Um, we can always override our focus styles on an individual label, individual level for our components to customize them even more for like our buttons or our inputs or anywhere else um, to dial them in even more but it's always important to show them and not hide them. Now there's mouse click management, and I will also demo this later. If you have many widgets on the page, you only want to have one widget open at the time. You don't want to open one and then have another one open, and another one open, and another one open. You're just like everything's stuck open at the time. And it's just going to cover things in the page, and it's just annoying. So we're going to set up a handler to make it happen so only one stays open at a time. So like our button ref, we're going to create a, uh, a content ref and initial, use the ref to initialize it to null. And then we're going to create an um, yep. create an on, out, on click outside handler and add a set is open. Um, and you know, did I lose? Did I lose? I did. I moved my stuff. All right. But we, so we're going to create, create the content ref. I need glasses. <laughs> content ref, initialize it to null. We're going to attach it to our div that for our container. And then we are going to create the on click outside event handler. And if, going to have an if statement, if the content ref or the button ref contains the event target, we are going to keep the widget open. So if, if anyone's clicking with their mouse on the target, the widget will stay open. And then if they click outside the target, we're going to have the state set, set out to false and close the widget. So it's going to handle for nice mouse cleanup. We'll just close it. So it's really nice. 
And then it will, of course, throw this like linter thing of like, we don't like that you're doing this, but it, it works really nice. <laughs> I love it. But now that we have this, out, um, this handler set up, we can use the use effect hook and some if statements to get this working. So for example, if the is open statement is true, we're gonna set, um, add some event listeners for mouse up and key up and add the um, click outside event handler there. And then otherwise, if it is open is false, we're gonna remove those event, hit li remove those event listeners. And then we're gonna do some cleanup for any stray um, event listeners and make sure they're removed to have them for running. And we are gonna also make sure that we add the is open prop as the second argument to our hook to make sure use effect only runs if the is open state changes value because we don't want to have to have that hook continually running. Otherwise, yikes. Um, but now we can use this part pattern to start making many pretty, pretty max, mass. So let's make a, so this is like a basic pattern for button opens a container. So we're going to make a toggle tip. So here's a toggle tip. And so button, container. And no, they're not a tooltip. And the difference is tooltips do not have interactive content inside. Tooltips do not have, um, they only revolve around hovering and sometimes focusing with a keyboard. Also, um, they do not have the ARIA, po ARIA pop-up attribute. Um, they are not supported by touch devices. Not, they are not supported by mouse pointers. They're not supported by eye trackers. But toggle tips have all this support. So this is why we're going to do a toggle tip. So technically, we've already built something that will support a toggle tip. So technically, we've already, support, we've already built a toggle tip. And we need a little styling. But I know you're all going to take this, go back, you're going to take this and you're going to go back and make something like this. <laughs> I know, I know you're all going to make an icon only button. <laughs> because <laughs> y'all hate to, you always like to hide those labels. Fine, we're going to make one with an icon only version. So let's talk about icons just for a minute. So. <sighs> Fine. Um, so icons can be informative or decorative. And if you have an informative icon, so they really should be paired with a descriptive text. So, you know, they can be perceivable by screen readers and by humans that can see. Um, and decorative icons need to be hidden from screen readers so they just don't just have extra fluff that you need to read that don't, doesn't mean anything because they don't add enough value to be read out. But what does an icon mean anyway? Because, for example, you, you could see this heart symbol and it could be mean favorite. So could this. But if you like pair it with text, they both could mean favorite. So, you know, there you, this, if you put the label with it, it means clear context. But of course, it depends on what your designer tells you to do. And then there's a buy-in from product and all that other stuff. So I get it. I get it, but it's my recommendation. Please try to get the label in there. Anyway, but since we want to support our icons in a button look component, we're going to do add a new component to the mix. As you see up there, it's the font awesome icon. And it's the font awesome react icon. And we're going to gate them behind this icon prop and render them only when we need them. And what's great about it is the font awesome team created this react component and it renders an SVG under the hood as decorative icons. They have it under the hood with using ARIA hidden as true. So they have it so it doesn't announce to, to screen readers. Um, this is ideal for our purposes because we can pair them with our button in a couple ways for accessible solutions. We can do it with either. Is it going? Yes. We can either pair our icon, pass in an icon name, and pair it with button text. There's an accessible button with an icon. So there's visible text. Or we can pair the icon, pass in an icon, say that it's an icon only button, and then pair it with an ARIA label, and then you have an accessible icon. So there's two ways you could do it. 
And they, so if you're using this SVD that doesn't read, you could do it this way or the other way. You have an accessible icon only button this way. So you have a solution. And then I'm not like, my hair's not going grayer. Um, and now we also have a, a way to add some CSS to do some overrides if we need to. And now we have that adjusted. We can use our, dis um, our disclosure widget to make a toggle tip. So we add our new props and we add some squint. We squint and add an ARIA label, our button icon, and our set it to icon only is true. Add our some button classes and add a div and a paragraph and a link and we have a toggle tip. And um, I will demo it afterwards because I'm going to struggle with what other part of my show where how things can go wrong. Mm -hmm. I also have a bug and I was I got a bug because I didn't forward a ref. So rah, I'm gnashing my teeth about that. But let's get to another part, which is the toggle search. So you can take a disclosure widget and you can make an embedded search form. So you can pass in, you can take your disclosure widget, pass in but button text a button icon, and uh, in your form, because you, you can pass in your, in your widget a form, and for our you know, prototype purposes, pass in an on, on submit and prevent the default in the event. And I'm going to take the input component that I made from the last talk I did. So I have an incompo input component that has like accessible ARIA labels and everything else and error handling and stuff like that. Still, you know doesn't have all the validation that you have at, at the other upper level, but it'll work for what we need. And as you notice, I put a label in there. So labels, name, the input type of search. So it will render as the correct type of input and put in a button because a form with an input should also have a button to go in there because when you're putting it in a disclosure, a screen reader, user should also have a way to click, you know, do the thing rather than just type. You, know, you see in Google, it's like, I'm just going to type and it's just going to do it for me. No, no, no. Press the button to actually perform the action. Um, anyway, also notice how I didn't put in the, in the button. I didn't put type equals submit. So buttons have, um, you know, default um, submit and button. And if you have a button inside of a form, you don't have to put type equals submit because it's wrapped in a, sub in a form. It gets that attribute for free, which is pretty cool. So with an embedded search widget, this is a perfect use case for a nice little UX enhancement where you can send the focus right to the input. So when you open the menu, we can s send the focus right into that input so someone can just start typing. So that we're going to do some focus management for that. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the use ref, use ref hook to create a DOM reference to our input. And this will allow us to do that targeted focus management. So we're going to create a variable called first item ref and use the use ref hook and initialize it to null. And we'll pass that first item ref to the disclosure widget prop and our inputs component input ref. And then in our disclosure widgets use effect, that first is open if statement. We're going to put a nested if statement in there, checking if that first item ref is defined. And if so, send focus to it. And then we're also going to pass that first item ref into the, the second argument to make sure we don't have component re-renders. And now we have an embedded search um, widget. And for menu lists, we could take the, um, <laughs> we can just, we could take the, um, this is where it gets complex. And this is where I'm going to go into code sandbox and struggle. And I'm going to show you just popping in buttons and where it gets great. But then you can start doing things like optional um, you can do some nice things like optional, like key up, down things. But right now I'm, I have a, uh, the word is, uh, 
forward ref issue. So it's like one thing is not working, but I'm going to show some stuff of like why, why things are going wrong. And you're going to love it because it's proving my point of why, how disclosure widgets can go wrong very quickly because you have like a little simple widget and you're like, I'm going to add one more thing. And I'm going to add another thing. And then your, your contributor is going to say, can we add one more thing here? Oh, well this, let's add a menu. Let's add some, let's add a drop down. Let's add a list of links. Let's add a list of buttons. Oh, can we do like a list of uh, radio buttons, radio inputs? Oh, let's do this other thing. That's when you get all this other ARIA attributes in here. And then it start all the roles start mixing and oh, it gets tangled. So let's see what we can do to, let's, let's see if we can break some things. I already broke some things, but let's, let's demo some of the stuff first. And I'm just going to bring over Sandbox and ha. Uh, you want hmm? to change the display to hmm? the demo? Um, I'm still going to go back to the slides, so I'm just going to go over there and sk I'm just going to squint at myself a bit. Oh, I don't know how to, yeah, my eyeballs are like, I'm just so squinty right now. Um, we are at, how are we on time? How are we on time? Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Okay, so this is what I'm going to do. I am going to, I'm going to demo some things real quick, and then I'm going to finish my slides, and then I'm going to get myself in real big trouble so you can see why I want to show you a few slides of why, because these certain slides are really funny, <laughs> and you can see why I'm breaking things. Um, so let me demo these first few things which are, actually, let me bring this back over so I can see my mouse again. Ah. Okay, so I'm going to unhide those. Actually, I'm going to hide them again for now. Okay, so this is, for a second, uh, I'm going to hide that for a minute so I can see more things and more, th you can see, I'm going to open... Let's see if that opens that in a new window. Will that do it? Let's see if this works. All right. So this is over here, and let's see if this works and if it renders everything like I want it to. All right, so this is a disclosure widget. And so I'm over here with my mouse, and I'm going to, well, first I can do with my, with my mouse because, you know, we all use our mouse, right? And I can do, 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 do. take my CSF, CSS, turn off some of the common styles so you can see that, oh, we don't have some like regular styles like, let's turn off some of the styles. There. That's an unstyled button. What? And I can't even see my own mouse now. Ooh, ooh, that's, a, that's an interesting button. Okay, let's turn that back on. <laughs> but as you can see, you know, we have some styles, and then if I turn off, like, the main CSS and turn off, you know, actually, if I turn off the button focus styles, you can see the main, the main focus styles. There. You can see some main focus styles. There. So you see the main focus styles right now of like the, the main focus styles that I created at the root level of the, that purple orchid box thing. And then what I did was, because the button is called Yes. And then if I add my background back in, now my button is black and then I have a nice pretty hover color and then I could just add this back in real quick and so now this is just a un, like a fairly minimal styled button but what I'm going to do instead really quickly so you have all the other ones on the page better is I'm going to show you instead I'm going to turn this one off and I'm going to show you 
first. You don't need that one. I'm going to show you first, not that one. And that one's broken, makes me sad. That one I was playing with and it works. I'm going to show you the toggle tip first. So, okay, wait, I, I will show you this one. So this is the, this is the basic styled one. And this is the, so this is the, you know, this is your basic toggle tip, right? And then if I go into my toggle tip and I have some added styles in my disclosure widget, come back, where are my styles? Don't tell me you hid my styles. Where's my toggle? Did you really delete my styles? Of course you did. App.js. I'm gonna open all of them because we're less than time away. Turn them all on. Hyphens auto. You know what? I'm gonna show you my code so you can see my code. See my code. And I'll try to go sideways. You can see my stuff. I can't see my stuff. All right, we're gonna try to mirror my stuff. Cause yeah, we're trying to keep on time and then I'd love to get, get my last slides. But this is exactly why I'm like, wait. Oh, it's, yeah, it's like it's showing some of my styles, but not my style. Let's do mirrored. Yeah. Let's at least mirror so I can figure out what's going on. Cool. All right. Thank you. And then we'll go back to extended. Awesome. All right. So why did my styles break? Of course they did. Disclosure. All right. Tooltip, border radius, my colors. Hmm? What's going on? That's weird. All right. I know. Did it, did it flip it? You flipped it. It's like now I'm looking at, they're just looking at my other screen. Okay. Yes, I'm gonna, I'm gonna reload the page since I didn't save anything, no, yeah. All right, well, my, my styles are really loading, so I didn't save anything. So at least I can show my styles. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this over there so at least you can see the stuff. So I have the stuff over there so you can see, at least see them. And I, at least I can demo them by keyboard. Um, so with my keyboard, I'm using my tab, open, close, space bar, tab over, tab. And there's my broken one. Thank you for doing that. <laughs> we are not going to open that one. I'm going to tab over to this one. This is the, the I'm going to go to the toggle tip first. Toggle tip. Hit escape. Well, I'm not going to hit escape because we have the extended desktop. <laughs> there is embedded search. Hit tab. Shift tab. Oh, now I can hit escape. Ready? Escape. Ah, and now hit return. Opens. Hit tab. Hit shift tab. Typeity, typeity, typeity. And hit escape. And hit tab. So we're basically going between all of these. And we have extended, we have a bunch of widgets that work. 
and they just go between all of them so they're accessible. Now, what I'm going to do is go back to, attempt to go back to extended mode and flip it the other way and get back to my slides because I was going to show you how to, there is a um, use row focus, is a way you could do roving focus to do up and down arrow keys and cycle between menu items. And what's really nice about that, and obviously it's not working now, but it only works for, you should be only be doing it for links. So when you have an unordered list um, and you have like a menu and men menu items, so like role equals menu and then menu items. If you ever use like React Aria, you'll see the ones for options, you know, an option list. They should not have interactive ch children, but when you have menu list and menu items, they should have a links inside. And you should be very, like there's very specific ways that you should be using Aria there because you can break, you can do things very carefully. And then you shouldn't be putting um, radio buttons in there okay. or check boxes because there's um, menu, there's like a menu radio and menu checkbox. And so you, that's when you start mixing the ARIA roles. So when you, when some, you start making these menus with these different inputs in there and someone's like, oh, we've done it for a link. We've done it for a button. Let's just throw another thing in there. And then your component gets, gets really big. And then you're like, oh no, wait. That's when it gets bad and your component gets really long. And then you're like, whoa, no, you make really bad decisions. <laughs> and it starts looking like this, that's your component. And it's just not appetizing. So don't miss, don't mix your masks because then the carnival that you thought you're going to that was in Venice there's this other carnival I discovered today, and I forget the name of the place, but it's not in Venice, but it's lo close by, and I'm sure you can recognize it from the picture. It's this one. Yes, it looks fun, but it's not, maybe not what you expected, okay? And so you may not, you may not be, you know, you may be disappointed if you expected the other one. So to wrap up, um, design systems are a carnival and our users are diverse, so we really should make our components accessible. And when you are making your, dis your disclosure widgets, don't mix your masks because otherwise you might not get <laughs> the component that you want or the experience you want and you might end up disappointed. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm on time. Am I on time? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you are awesome. Guys, you have any questions? Okay, okay. Thank you so much, Kathleen. <laughs> <Ta -da>. Thank you. <laughs>